During the summer of 1937, Luther Cressman and some of his students began exploring caves along the cliffs of Catlow Valley in southeastern Oregon. Dr. Cressman was the head of the newly formed anthropology department at the University of Oregon. In later years, he recalled one of their early discoveries in Roaring Springs Cave, a direct link to the ancient people who lived in the caves. We found one day a pair of sandals that had been worn by some small child. They were uh, tied together by a tie string, and close by these were two very small baskets. They were in very good shape. They were not thrown away. Something must have happened to that youngster and her family. Went out one morning and never came back. And we found those things an unknown number of years later. The work that Dr. Cressman and his students started that summer became the first scientific search for the vanished people of the northern Great Basin. As I stand here in this dry, flat expanse, which is a bed, very, very dry now, of an ancient lake, my mind goes back over more than 40 years during which I have worked here in the Northern Great Basin to describe and understand the way of life of the people who lived here. We know they've lived here for at least 13,000 years and from indirect evidence a great deal longer than that. There's considerable controversy about the date when human prehistory began on the American continents. But anthropologists do agree that even the first people were immigrants. Early human and pre-human skeletal remains on other continents date back several million years. But the only human remains found in the Americas have been those of fully developed people. The question is then, if people didn't evolve here, how did they get here? A growing body of evidence shows us that the first Americans began a long journey out of Asia during the last ice age, a time of great glaciers, huge animals, and the emergence of modern people. During the ice ages, the climate of the world fluctuated widely between periods of warmth and periods of cold. These fluctuations each spanned thousands of years. Vast areas in the northern hemisphere were uninhabited, and cold touched the lives of people all over the world. Much of the global water supply was trapped in the glaciers, and the water no longer ran back into the oceans. As the glaciers grew, the water level of the oceans dropped 300 to 400 feet. Gradually, the continental shorelines widened, and new land masses appeared. One of the new land areas that surfaced was at the Bering Straits between North America and Asia. Today, the sea is shallow there, and depth recordings show the outline of an elevated plateau on the ocean floor. But during the ice ages, whenever the water level dropped, the plateau was a flat open tundra at least a thousand miles wide. Constant winds kept it free of ice and snow. People and animals from both continents foraged back and forth over the land connection. There were periods of time when the glaciers melted back far enough to raise the water level of the oceans. Then the land connections disappeared again under the water. Each time that happened, an ice-free corridor opened between the eastern and western ice masses of North America. Through that passageway, many generations of first Americans gradually moved southward, eventually populating the northern and southern continents. Some of those first Americans found their way into the Great Basin of the North American West. And thousands of years after that, Luther Cressman and his students went into the northern Great Basin. Young Dr. Cressman joined the University of Oregon faculty in 1929 to teach sociology. 
classes at Columbia University with famous anthropologist Franz Boas had also sparked his interest in prehistoric cultures. So when he arrived in Oregon, Dr. Cressman's attention was attracted to the ancient rock art in the state. As soon as possible, he organized a trip to make a first photographic record of all the examples he could find. A graduate student, Howard Stafford, and I drove between 2,100 and 2,500 miles in my Model A and made a very large collection of photographs of petroglyphs. During the survey of rock art, Dr. Cressman began to observe signs of ancient lakes that once filled the valleys. All these lakes had beach 